Nonetheless, that makes five seats that Labor may win, which would enable them to govern in their own right. And the coalition would go from 52 to 58, which means the loss of 18 seats, a wipeout. The only seat that the Liberals could win is Gilmore, where Andrew Constance has today crept narrowly to the lead in front by 306 votes. Some significant points must be made. Some are unpalatable. No one wants to be dancing on anyone's political grave. But if you could forgive the vulgar expression, Scott Morrison believed his own bullshit. It's not in the last week that he couldn't win. This election was lost months and months ago. I can well remember the drought of 2018 and the Turnbull government with Morrison as treasurer offered nothing to farmers, but they had $444 million for the Great Barrier Reef Foundation who never asked for a cent. Then we had the extraordinary business about lockdowns and businesses being put out of business, workers out of work, but money being thrown around like confetti. Casuals on a couple of days' work a week worth $200, suddenly were getting $750. Southwest Sydney, where mysteriously the coalition thought they could win seats, would make statements about the government that are unprintable because of the way they were made to live during lockdown. Victoria used to be the jewel in the Liberal crown. They went into the election holding 12 seats out of 38 and Labor leader Daniel Andrews on the nose. But the Liberal Party may end up holding only eight seats, half of which are on margins of less than 5%, and Josh Frydenberg, the prince of Victorian Liberals, is gone. The bruising reality is that in trying to find its way back into office, there is little that anyone can point to in the past nine years that could be described as a legacy. This country is urgently in need of reform when it comes to debt, taxation, freedom of speech, education, industrial relations, the outgoing government was silent on the lot. The unpalatable truth, and there are those words again, is that Scott Morrison delivered victory to Labor. Not only have the Liberals lost power, in doing so they've surrendered traditional Liberal values to the extent that the base of the party has been lost. As one commentator wrote at the weekend of Morrison, he was a bulldozer all right, he bulldozed his party into electoral oblivion. The Liberal leader went, became so poisonous to traditional Liberal voters that he dared not show his face in traditional Liberal heartland. He single-handedly turned Blue Ribbon Liberal seats teal. If Cathy McGowan and Zali Stegall were the mothers of the teal movement, Morrison was its father. The teal candidates couldn't have done it without him. There'll be a savage reckoning in the Liberal Party, unquote. Well, then there's the question of judgment. In politics, as in sport and business, if your judgment's crook, you're gone. He attacked Christine Holgate over some watches. Women reeled at the language that was used. Then the cost of living and the gap between wages and inflation. When Albanese said the minimum wage would have to increase, Morrison attacked him and then backtracked when presumably some focus group warned that he was on the wrong tram. I mentioned weeks ago that one word would dominate the campaign. That word was care, aged care, child care, care for the disabled. Albanese is no political saint, and like the bloke pushing the barrow up a hill, Albanese has the job in front of him, but he spoke to those in need of care. Morrison shouted in return. Even on Saturday night, in his speech conceding defeat, Morrison was still shouting. He opened by thanking the Defence Forces, and that was fine. He said they'd saved Australia. But so too had our nurses and doctors and our SES men and women in the floods and the fires. Why were they forgotten? These things matter. When you lose your traditional Liberals and the pre-selections in New South Wales were held up to favour Morrison's mates, in the end there were 11th hour selections and then the candidates virtually abandoned. When you lose your traditional Liberals, when you abandon traditional Liberal values and when your record of competence think debt is being questioned, the Liberals now have to endure the end result. The party pitchforked into oblivion. As one commentator said, in the end, Morrison had nothing to offer. The electorate reciprocated by offering him nothing in return.